first of all, let me thank Enrique. I really love this man. He's such a great friend. He has me follow two professional writers. What kind of friend is that? He has me follow two professional writers. Now I gotta follow them. That's like when I had to follow George Lopez, you know? It's like, okay, bring the boring politician up now, right? <laughs> then I get an introduction that's about as long as my efforts to pass the driver's license bill. <laughs> so the expectation is up here. Nobody can meet it, right? That's what a great friend my brother is. But let me first begin by thanking my colleagues who are here. I am honored to serve in the California State Legislature. It is a rare moment. It is a hallowed place. 120 people every day get up to try to set the direction for the most important state and the most important nation in the world today. And so I'm honored to have that position. I take that very seriously. And I'm very honored to be here with my colleagues, the leader of the Latino Caucus, Tony Mendoza, my colleague, Ben Wessel, you guys know his leadership and look forward to it. Denise Duchaney is with us, and Lori Saldana, is she still with us? Lori, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for all that you do. Let me thank you. I've had a great day in San Diego today. I spent time at David and Tere's house. Thank you, very gracious host, and thank you for your leadership and all that you do to bring parents together for the purposes of education. I want to thank, of course, Enrique for his extraordinary leadership. I applaud the leadership both of Ruben, who I look up on Facebook to see what he's up to. I gave him an award a few years ago. It created such a controversy at the Capitol. I was embarrassed. I wasn't there. I was sick. I couldn't be there. And then he uh, went to get his award, and it was a huge controversy. But it was a controversy based on the truth. And that's the problem he and I have, is we have this affinity for the truth. And so he writes about it, and I try to work legislation through it. Josefina, thank you for what you do. I remember seeing your movie. My mother and my sister were crying because it embodied the experience that we had. It was my mother's sewing factory in downtown Los Angeles. And it was for the first time that a story was told about our lives by our people and our voice. And so I thank you and I'm honored and privileged to be here with you. Let me say about why we're here tonight, Enrique. You are an angel, you are a saint, and you are our moral authority. I have no qualms about saying that. No hesitation, no pause. Every elected Latino in this nation, at every level, should be engaged in the battle of the border angels. There is nothing more important, more central, and more critical to our place at this moment, to our standing in this community at this moment than the struggle that is led by the Border Angels. If you are a Latino elected, if you want to be a Latino leader, and this is not central to your work, then you are not serious. It's that simple. You are not serious about your duty and your obligation and your charge. Because Ruben is, is right about this. Our community is under extraordinary attack. The deportations are extraordinary. The numbers confounding. They perplex every Democrat. They perplex all good people of goodwill. The hate that goes on in Alabama, in Mississippi, Arizona, Georgia, throughout this state, throughout this country, is unbelievable. And I'll tell you where you see it the most. As a senator, I was very, very privileged to be in the Senate for eight years. So I got to travel each year. And it's amazing, you leave for two weeks, and guess what? There's no news of the invasion. There's no news of the war. There's no news of the battle. If you go around the world, 
No one's talking about the invasion taking place in the United States of America. But when you land and you come back and you put on CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, all the stations, let alone Fox. You put on Fox and we're at war. You wonder, when did war get declared? When did this invasion take place? And there's this, this anti-immigrant hysteria that takes place 24 seven. And so the work of the Border Angels is the most important work to be done right now. And then you have to bring that story, that story of dust in the desert, and think about how do we move forward? How do we go from fear to hope? And I say to you, the way we do that is through the DREAM Act and through these young men and women, because they are the future. We are a nation of immigrants, and they are no different than the first people getting off a boat. No different. They come with hopes and aspirations. They're brought through no choice of their own. They become the best and brightest within one generation. They learn another language. They excel and overcome difficult situations. And let me say to you, what you hear on Fox is a lie. Ruben will tell you, they have legal rights. Those legal rights began here in California with Westminster. The Mendez versus Westminster began to lay the foundation before Brown versus Board of Education. And from Brown versus Board of Education, we went to Plyler in Texas, laying the foundation, the legal right for these young men and women to get an education. And that was reiterated and the struggle against Proposition 187, and reiterated this year in the Supreme Court in the defense of AB 540. So these young men and women have a legal right. But more importantly than that, they have a moral right. And we have a moral obligation to ensure that this next generation is given the tools and the opportunities to realize their God-given talents. That's what we're here for tonight. Because there are strategies to go forward. They're not D or R. They're L, as Ruben says. It's amazing what the power of an idea can do. Enrique, the power of an idea whose time has come. The power of truth. And so they take their form in sometimes in ways that we can't imagine. All of a sudden, Occupy negates the Tea Party. And now that becomes a world phenomenon. And then, who would think in December, the DREAM Act defeated in Congress with insufficient help from the Ds? The DREAM Act defeated and vetoed again by Governor Schwarzenegger. The impounding of vehicles of immigrant motorists to fund local government. A hundred million dollars in the city of Los Angeles in fees and fines on the impounds of the vehicles of immigrant motorists who are supposed to be looking for drunken motorists. Do you look for drunken motorists on Sunday morning on the corridor where people go to church? Do you look for drunken motorists on Saturday morning outside of Target and Costco and Walmart and, and uh, Home Depot? Or is it a better idea to search for them at night outside the, the entertainment zones that, that, that we can identify throughout the state of California? And so that was January. And then we moved forward with the idea of the DREAM Act. With a tremendous sense of urgency, we put forward AB 130 because we wanted to have a victory. Because a victory is so important for us, Ruben. And we as a community have to define that victory. We have to determine the strategies and the benchmarks and, and those values that they're most important to us. And that's what the DREAM Act has become for us. We have a vision, 
says children should be treated equally and fairly and not be punished for the actions of their parents. It's an American value. We have a strategy that says we should build a coalition, not just with, 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 with the students, they're wonderful. They've demonstrated their commitment to this, to this vision. But also with the churches, and not just the Catholic church, but the evangelical churches. All the churches, all faith-based people should join us in this movement. And then we should build that coalition with people who have an interest in these young men and women. The business community, the chambers, the, the, the industries like the Silicon Valley where they look forward to, to a, for, for filling up our shortage of engineers and scientists. Because that's what these young men and women are going to be. They're going to be our next engineers and scientists. Look at that incredible brain surgeon, Dr. Q and John Hopkins. He was undocumented. Look at who won the Pulitzer this year, Ruben Vives, uncovering the corruption of bail. He was undocumented. A man calls me in my office. We take all the hate calls every day. He says, why are you doing this? I said, because I want the best for America. Don't you want the best? Well, they're not legal. I said, well, you don't know that. They haven't gone to court. They haven't had due process. That's a characteristic of our nation. I said, but don't you want the best surgeon? Don't you want the best scientist? Don't you want the best engineer to help rebuild our crumbling bridges? Don't you want the best that God has given us? And so we have to broaden this coalition and bring in all those elements and look to people who comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable to tell our story and then to bring that Josefina into the popular culture. That's our strategy as a community. It's not D, it's not R. It's the truth. Sisters and brothers, I thank you so much for, for honoring me here. You know, I wasn't always a senator. People didn't always sing my praises. You know, I'm a young man from Barstow, California. I grew up in downtown Los Angeles I'm from Boyle Heights. We share that. My mother took the early bus. My father worked in the American Can Company. I wasn't always a senator. People didn't always want to know what I thought, what I had to say. I wasn't likely to meet the next president of this country, nor would he be interested in what I had to say. But I'm here with you today because this is our destiny. This is our mission, and this time, Enrique, is your time. And this time, for this nation, there is no clearer clarion call on the moral choice, and the moral issue of the day, than to defend immigrants coming to continue the great American dream. Sisters and brothers, thank you so much for your support.